Welcome back. This is uh, Chem Doctor, and in this video, we're going to continue talking about Le Chatelier's principle. And this has to do with uh, chemical reactions that are at equilibrium, and then we alter the equilibrium by manipulating either concentration, uh, pressure, or the temperature of the reaction. And uh, in this particular presentation, we're focused on uh, pressure changes due to the alteration of volume. <clears throat> so we have a chemical reaction that has at least one uh, species in it that, that is in uh, the, the gas phase. And in this particular uh, reaction, which is uh, actually, by the way, is the same reaction we used in the previous video, uh, that dealt with uh, pressure changes and Le Chatelier's principle. <clears throat> in this video, what we're going to do, instead of looking at an alteration that reduces the volume, which increases the pressure, the focus here will be what happens when we uh, increase the volume. So we're going to be looking at a situation where we, uh, and I'll make us a little cheat sheet here, where we're going to increase the volume of the reaction vessel and uh, remembering gas laws, if we increase the volume of a gas, uh, the pressure is going to go down because volume and pressure uh, vary inversely. Um, and you can, you can draw this simple relationship. Uh, and like I said, we're going to be focused on the scenario where the, the volume is increasing. But we can also look at the opposite scenario, which is what the previous video was about, <clears throat> where we reduce the volume. And that has an opposite effect on the pressure by increasing pressure. So in this video, and I'll just emphasize this by putting a parenthesis around it, we're going to uh, increase the volume of our uh, reaction vessel, and that's going to cause a reduction in pressure. Now, we're starting uh, the process with this reaction at equilibrium, notice the equilibrium constant is 136, so it's a large equilibrium constant. We're going to stipulate that we're that we have a uh, reaction volume that is one liter, and we're at <clears throat> some kind of uh, fixed temperature. So the temperature uh, is not going to change. Our starting concentrations in molarity will be point. 105 molar for the carbon monoxide, uh, 0.114 molar for the hydrogen, and uh, 0.185 molar uh, for the methanol or CH3OH. Now, like in the previous video, uh, what we're going to do first is, so we're, we're going to increase the volume of this, it's going to reduce the pressure and if you've been with me through the playlist, um, what you realize then when you look at this equation is that, okay, if we reduce the pressure, in order to get back to equilibrium, the reaction is going to have to increase the pressure. What's the easiest way to do that? And you can see that when we relate the two sides of the equation, that there are um, three particles of gas on the left side and uh, one one particle of gas over here on the right side. So the reaction, in theory, should have to shift to the left to produce more particles of, of gas in order to increase pressure. So let's see if that is, um, in fact, uh, the case. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply through by the volume. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to say we're going to multiply by one liter Remember that your units of molarity are in units of moles per liter, so that's going to convert this um, concentration unit here to moles, 0 0.105 moles. This concentration unit will be uh, manipulated to uh, moles, and this guy will go to moles. All right, and if, if, if the viewer is unsure how I did that, I, maybe what I'll do really quickly is put the basic conversion over here. So we have 0 0.105 and it's units of moles per liter, and we're multiplying times one liter. Okay, and you can see that 
the leaders cancel out and that's how we get to the moles. Okay, now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to demonstrate very clearly how we're getting this uh, re reduction in, in pressure and the way we're doing that is by increasing the volume. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take and we're going to increase our volume by two liters. So we're going to go through and divide each of these guys by two liters. So we literally, we doubled the size of the reaction vessel that we're in. So we're going to go through and we divide each of these mole units by liters, by two liters. And, and now our new molarity in each one of these cases is, so realize what we're doing is that we're essentially cutting these molarities in half. So the, the new molarity uh, here is going to be 0 0.0525 for this one. The molarity for the hydrogen will be uh, 0 0.057 molar and the molarity for the product, the methanol, is going to be 0 0.0925. Now, what makes these values different than what we started with is that these are initial concentrations now. They're uh, they're not equilibrium. So these are um, non-equilibrium, let me do it that way, non-equilibrium concentrations. Non-equilibrium concentrations. So like in past videos uh, of the chemical equilibrium playlist, when we have initial concentrations here, so there are two issues. First, this is Le Chatelet's principle because we've knocked this system out of equilibrium. Number two, we've learned in past videos that when we're dealing with uh, initial concentrations that to evaluate which way the reaction is going to go, we calculate Q. So we're going to do that now. So we're going to calculate Q and Q in any chemical uh, um, situation is literally written in the same format as the K value, but we're plugging in non-equilibrium values. So we're going to have 0 0.0925 in the numerator. All right, and then we're going to be divided by the uh, carbon monoxide, which is 0 0.0525, and that's quantity raised to the first power, and then um, the hydrogen will be raised to the second power. 0 0.057 raised to the second power. All right, and what we get for our Q value here is uh, 542. All right, and you can see that that uh, Q is indeed greater than K. And so um, the reaction uh, must shift uh, to the left to reattain equilibrium, to get back to the equilibrium um, position of the reaction. So the reaction shifts left. Now, if you remember back to the beginning of the video, I said that, all right, we can rationalize through this because we, we were, had an increase in volume which causes a reduction in the pressure. All right, we got the increase in volume by doubling the, the volume uh, container. It's doubling its volume from one liter to two liter. And I pointed out that you can look at the equation. And you have to be careful when you do this. I'm, we're dealing here with, a, with an equation that has all the species in gas form. And that's the only place this is really going to work. Um, you don't want to arbitrarily apply this um, to reactions where um, um, th there, you, that you have more than one type of, of uh, species, like if there was a liquid or a solid, or, or if you had solution molarities in some cases. You, you need to pay attention when we do this only to the gas species. So when you look at this equation, we're all in gases and there are three particles of gas on the left side and one particle of gas on the right side of the equation. So in order for this reaction to get back to equilibrium, it's going to have to increase its pressure and 
when you look at this, that means it needs to shift in the direction of making more gas particles. So in the very beginning, we rationalize, all right, we're going to be shifting to the left. And lo and behold, when you calculate the, the Q for this, we see that Q is greater than K. And that tells us that the reaction indeed has to sh shift to the left from an analytical point of view. And so we see that the two methods for figuring this out were consistent. Now, you would have to use Q in situations where you might have to do an equilibrium calculation. And what I mean by that is that once we've determined which way the reaction is going to shift, you would set up your ICE or your box and then solve for the equilibrium, the new equilibrium con um, concentrations of, of the reactants in the products. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close.